Welcome to my Bewitching Podcast, where I take you on a journey to initiate you into the mysteries and pleasures of all things magical and more. I'm Julie Nelson, Rich Witch, botanical perfumer, astrologer, and creator of the Fragrant Oracle. I'll discuss a myriad of topics passionately on women rising unapologetically, witchcraft, including spells, rituals, insightful astrology updates, and oracle card readings. I'll also introduce you to special guests who share their bountiful knowledge and experience in the art of witchcraft, the intuitive and healing arts, and being wildly unapologetic. Today's scented goddess is the forever young at heart and sprightly muse, Bergamo. No surprise with these qualities, knowing that she's ruled by fun-loving Sagittarius and the forever wise and expansive Jupiter. With my enthusiastic, fiery essence, I will light the way for you as I weave the magic of joy, happiness and delight into your daily expressions and experiences. I am the goddess of your creative voice and soul, adding a touch of cheeky wildness to embolden a fun-loving life force that is magnetic. My gift to you is motivation to support and inspire you. Be open to exploring and experiencing the manifestation of your desires with ease. Courageously seek the freedom you desire. Be carefree laugh and dance with life and you will most certainly inspire those around you. I joyfully offer you these empowering affirmations to meet with my revivifying scent. Being happy and playful are qualities that come to me with ease. I am intoxicatingly fun, loving and spontaneous. I am a creative, magnetic muse. I am playfully seductive and carefree. I am divine inspiration. Hello, rich witches, priestesses, goddesses, women of the modern world. Welcome to the Rich Witch Podcast. I'm Julie Nelson. And today I have a wonderful goddess with us to talk about goddess energy and how to tap into our own or access our own goddess energy to create what we desire in our lives. So I'm going to hand over Jamie Hearn to introduce herself and get started. Jamie, you can you can get straight into it if you like. And then if any questions come up, I'll put my hand up and perhaps we can um, also talk about a couple of specific goddesses. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Julie. I'm super excited to chat with you. Fantastic. So I am an intuitive oracle, a medium, an author, and a whole list of other things, including an attorney. Um, <laughs> I know it's such an interesting combination of energies that I exhibit in the world, but the most prevalent one for me on a personal level has been my connection with goddess energy. Mm. And that's really given me the opportunity to access 
who my soul is and create the coolest life that I possibly can here in this incarnation. Of course, that's what we all want. I love that. And I love <laughs> working with goddess energy. And I do have a few favorites that I like to invoke. However, I'll pass it back over to you. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll go I down a rabbit hole. <laughs> oh, I totally understand that. And I also have a few favorites. Um, Joan of Arc has been present in my life since I was a child. And I didn't necessarily have the awareness of her being such an exalted energy until I was much older. I just thought she was this really cool spirit that visited me. I also thought that everyone had a family living in the junk room that their parents couldn't see. Uh -huh. I didn't realize that that was a unique experience until I was an adolescent. <laughs> love it. Love it. <laughs> um, but I have spent a lot of time learning the energies and understanding how each goddess not necessarily um, every goddess because there are, are countless goddesses, but many of the main goddesses that are known mm. in popular culture, each of them has a slightly different energy and characteristic and the qualities that they are bringing through for us. And so let's look let's say isis for example mm. she is a strong powerful energy and a lot of the things that she represents are also represented by other goddesses but you might not have the same vibrational match as you do with isis so it's important to explore who you feel called to explore because there's a reason yes can i can i share so that makes sense to me because and i take it back to my astrology because i've i'm a five-fold libran so i've got very strong venusian essence and i love venus however i do not relate to aphrodite and it's interesting because i know that they you know they're co they're counter goddesses that you know they have the same energies but it's i just don't relate to aphrodite venus is my yeah and, and that's totally fine because she could have been a, a parallel spirit to you not mm. someone that you were directly looking up to so it, it makes mm. sense that maybe you don't identify with her exactly it's not that you're discounting anything that she does or represents she's no. just not your vibe yeah exactly exactly yeah it's really so, really interesting it is and the most important goddess to connect with is yourself of course of course our programming is such that we have seen separation between us and those we put on a pedestal but truly we are they they are we so accessing your own inner goddess is really the most transform formative experience you can endeavor on this goddess journey oh man i love that um and i'm because in magic um we have invoking and evoking so i'm not sure if you work with that so in invoking is when we actually take on that goddess we're one Whereas evoking is tapping into her qualities and it's a little bit different. So you're embodying, you're being, and that's how I feel with Venus. I am Venus. She is me. Um, and it's so, so is it almost like 
like an internal and external thing like evoking you recognize out like outside yourself invoking you call within yourself yes yes okay that's probably an easier way to to say it yeah yeah that that makes perfect sense Mm. and you can call in and invoke characteristics and qualities of any number of goddesses like you're looking to find and source more inner compassion Kuan Yin may be your girl I was just gonna say Kuan Yin absolutely (laughs) I love her I love working with Kuan Yin yeah yeah I do too and uh, she's got a very gentle kind nurturing energy but -hmm. occasionally she reminds me rather tersely (laughs) where I'm not showing up with compassion for myself and at first I was like hey sister you're supposed to nurture me why are you being so harsh and she was like I give you exactly what you need yeah (laughs) it's like we've got to have these lessons uh these teachings and and receive the opportunities so it's doing that self-work on ourself um yes And I'm just going to say too, which is such a beautiful thing to weave in, is with my aromatherapy perfumery background, well, you know, I've been doing it for 30 years, is that each of the goddesses you can work with certain essential oils with as well, which is beautiful. And Kuan Yin, of course, one of the oils that we have easy access to is um rose yes because she is compassion and love and also rule uh, venus rules rose as well but rose is the plant it's the highest vibrational plant we have on this planet and love truth trust compassion so there are others and and again, it's about what aligns for you. Like you say, you can call in any goddess and it's having a really clear intention as, of what you're desiring from that goddess. Or if you're dancing with her, she might be saying, as you said, hey, you need to, to go within, reflect and bring more compassion to yourself, which we're yes. good at not doing. and connecting with goddess energy isn't difficult it doesn't require huge ceremony it's something every listener can do so when people in start down this path often they're like oh i don't know if i have the right stuff to do this you do I just want to make sure that everyone knows this is accessible to every person who desires it. Mm. Um, I, I'm happy to share a simple practice that I use when I'm connecting with a new goddess that I'm not really familiar with her energy. So I don't yes, necessarily is. have a good idea of, you know, like what's going to invoke her immediately. Mm. Nature is a huge role in my goddess practice. I mean, Julie, as you can see, I'm, I like nature. (laughs) Uh, So I will identify a location that is going to be quiet and supportive and hopefully allow me to really connect with the energies of nature. Um, And then I write out what my intention is. Maybe it's to connect with Bridget, the the exalted goddess of Ireland or Celtic lore. So I literally write down, I'm calling in Bridget and I want to get to know her. So I'll go to whatever place it is. And it could be just in your house. You set a little sacred space because not everybody has access to a beautiful park or something. Mm. But setting the intention and the sacred space is really the 
most critical step to calling in that energy and then going within. Mm. So I like to go into the space of no thing into the, the womb of creation. Mm -hmm. And you can accomplish that by breathing deeply, but a lot of people don't understand how to breathe deeply. True. True. I said to my husband, take a deep breath. And it, it, he was like, <gasps> I was like, that's not a deep breath. <laughs> don't you know how to breathe? He didn't know how to breathe. Mm. So learning to source the, your breath into your belly and all the way down into your pelvis will give you access to the womb of no thing that mm -hmm. space of creation where nothing exists and that is the ideal place to connect with goddess energy your mm -hmm. own goddess energy those you're calling in because nothing exists there no expectations no obligations no responsibilities and there's real power there so pra i invite people to practice that I'm, if I'm you're just doing it now is you're speaking <laughs> and i can actually feel my womb start to activate because you know of course i always do these things when people start talking i suddenly <laughs> go into it carry on i'm loving it yeah it's not necessarily something that will feel comfortable on the first try but i encourage people to continue working on this and after a couple of exercises with this practice, it will become a space that you desire to retreat to because it is so nurturing and so detached from all of the things that our human existence creates that are stressful and create anxiety. Mm. That space within your womb doesn't have any of those i love i love 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 that and i'm and as you were speaking i i am in the mountains where i live so i have a lot of beautiful um mountain and bush energy around me i have national park in my backyard so to speak like literally five minutes um, so it's easy for me to connect in and mother nature for me is a goddess of her own and we're all one and a part of that like you know she is me I am her etc um, and it's beautiful but in the city it can be really challenging for people and you said to create that sacred space which is what I love to do like have while you're getting um, clear on your t intention because I think it's really really important to be super clear when you are in or calling in I'm going to say because in witchcraft we recommend that people understand what they're doing so with invoking and evoking so I'm going to say calling in which is is like um, evoking and practice practice and creating that beautiful sacred space we feel safe and you know uh, for me being you know the aroma queen <laughs> or the perfume <laughs> priestess of something called it's like the smells the scents really help to evoke or conjure the energy of the goddesses as well and yes. I love working with Celine, the moon. And so Jasmine, for example, is a beautiful oil for connecting in with Celine or Luna. <clears throat> yes. Um, it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Anything, anything else you want to share on that? Jasmine happens to be one of my favorite oils. So oh. just as an aside, I find that the properties of that oil to elevate my own vibration mm. 
Mm -hmm. So it's easier for me to connect with the energies that I'm seeking when my vibration is high. So using oils that you feel called to use, Mm -hmm. not necessarily ones that someone said, you should use this for this and this for this. Be discerning. Exactly. And listen to yourself. Yeah, absolutely. That's very important because also we know whether you're conscious of it or not we know what we need or what our essence our femme essence our core essence is calling in and you know jasmine she works on a lot she's heart she's base chakra she's crown chakra she's the mermaid energy so she's the seductress and the shapeshifter so you know i mean i can go on about oils forever (laughs) Um, because that's my passion and and what i've been doing for so long and have a very intimate relationship with them and with the goddess energy because i relate to them as being goddesses themselves i call them scent goddesses because i've created the fragrant oracle and each one of them i relate to as a very beautiful sensual feminine goddess or priestess or witch energy and so it's a beautiful combination to work with and tell us a little bit because i know you're launching a book soon so we will put jamie's contact details in the show notes However, I'd just like to ask you about your book that's launching soon because I have a feeling that it is one that I may be putting on my bookshelf. So let us let us hear about a bit of it. So this book is a study in Celtic mythology around the goddess culture of the Celts. Mm. And it was super interesting for me to dive into that energy. Um, primarily because it's interesting, but also to see the importance that the culture as a whole placed on the divine feminine, Mm -hmm. which, as we know, has been in a process of reemerging. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, um, and it's been over decades. It's not something new. And I think if i dare say it i feel that patriarchy has been feeling threatened for a while now so there's a bit of a fight back so we've got a really well i'm saying for myself and anybody that wants to join us stand in that goddess energy that we have and are and keep rising unapologetically is so important because Let's face it, the world's pretty fucked right now and we need more feminine energy. (laughs) Well, right. And from my perspective, patriarchy is based in fear and control. All those dudes were like, oh boy, she's got more power than I even can conceptualize. How do I, how do I get power back? Yes. And the world our universe our entire existence is based in nurturing creation yes and the more we can realign with that the better all of our existences will be yes and it it has to start with each of us individually Mm -hmm. i have two sons i have introduced both of them to goddess culture not because i I thought that there was something that they needed to learn specifically about a goddess, but overall, how to understand the divine feminine and every now and then they're teenage boys. So Mm. I have to remind them, yeah, no, that, that is not the energy you're going to exist in. Let's go talk to the goddess. (laughs) Jamie, that is amazing. And I would love to see more of of that because it is about bringing balance in, isn't it? We need the masculine, we need the feminine 
um, yes. they 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 dance so beautifully together but it's so out of balance right now and what you just said then really touched me because that is key and i still feel that a lot of parents are not bringing that in to our children's upbringing and they're going to be the ones they're the future so it's really really powerful and it's it's important that the masculine is um revered as the feminine needs to be more revered not this out of balance i mean why were so many witches yes i know men were accused of witches and and killed as well but mainly it was because they realized women had this power and it, and it's the sacred masculine not the toxic wounded masculine yes, that of most of us are familiar with mm -hmm. i'm from a, a unique lineage because in my tradition or my family's tradition our power and connection passes from father to daughter to son mm. so there's a really powerful interplay between the masculine and feminine and my younger son is now coming into his power mm -hmm. and as a mother it's amazing to see how deep his connection is and how much access he has to awarenesses that I don't have mm. and I'm like oh boy <laughs> However, he's got a I lot to think, teach me <laughs> yeah but haven't you planted the seeds for that as well I know there's lineage um there you know with that you know passing through the different generations However, I still feel that with what you've just spoken, that you have planted some beautiful seedlings there to flourish and grow. Yes. And he's articulated to me that he's grateful to have me as his mother. Oh. He chose me. So he, he knew where, where he was going with this, but uh, because he recognizes the ability to grow that i've created for him that my dad didn't have mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. our mission is to further this more than the generations who pre preceded us were able to yes absolutely i i love that and i don't know what your son's name is or how old he is but i've fallen in love with him just from those <laughs> words that you shared i love that that's what we <laughs> want <laughs> Because the thing is, then we as goddesses are really happy to walk with them, you know, and give that sacred support, receive it's that, you know, like intertwining, entanglement in a good way. Yes. It's like weaving and entangling and beautiful, beautiful. Um, so when is your book out, Jamie? It is being published in August, mm -hmm. so it will be available on Amazon and on on my website. There'll be links. I'm sure that you will let me know because I know that we'll stay in contact. I'm going to invite you to perhaps, if you would like, is come back again and perhaps you might like to read some little excerpts. From oh yeah, the, I'd love to. Yeah, we could do a couple, you know, of podcasts and maybe weave in the ritual and the sacredness and the essential oils, and that would be beautiful. Yes, yeah. one every goddess that I present in the book, I include prompts and practices to assist in connecting with that goddess. So I'd love to share that. That would be stunning and may i ask one more question before we complete how many goddesses have you got in the book in in that book we go deep into five and then we have 
a superficial reference to a number of other goddesses. Right. There's no way I could possibly provide a, a deep dive into all of them. There are just so many. So we reference some of the ones that are well known. And then we give some acknowledgement to a few others who were not as well known, but just as important. I love that. I love that. And yes, you'd be spending lifetimes writing about them. And, and that's also why... Yes we may feel um, attracted to a handful of goddesses. I love so many and I love their energies, but I don't particularly work with them. I just right. love to know about them in case. Um, I've worked with Artemis. I conjured and invoked Artemis for about 10 months last year and I want to come back when, and work with her, but I'm very much a Lilith Venus girl. Goddess. Yes. Um, I love Lilith. Oh, so do I. I'm very Lilith. I'm very, especially in my um, decade that I'm in, it's really like she's so good and unapologetic, you know, because I'm yes. in the mega stage and in my 60s and it's like, I don't give a fuck, but I do give a fuck about what's important. So. Right, but not what anybody else thinks. <laughs> Absolutely, and it's such a beautiful place to be. So, ladies, for those of you listening to us, you have a lot to look forward to in your life for the younger ones and continuing. For me, it just keeps getting better as a woman and how I feel about myself and the empowerment that I, the enrichment that I, I embrace and honor and call in for myself. And Jamie, you've um, really shared some beautiful things here that have really touched me personally. So I look forward to having you come back and share your book It'll i would be love fun. that thank you yeah thank you so much thank you um do you hang out on facebook a lot i do i'm on facebook more than any other social media okay. yeah so what we as i said we'll put your show notes in I mean, your show notes, your information in the show notes. I look forward to your um, book coming out, but perhaps we can have a call before it even comes out so that people, you know, even, a, you know, what, at least one and then some more um, <laughs> to uh, discuss it. And I'll tell you what, and this is for our listeners as well, which has only just come to me. I'm starting a Rich Witch book club at the end of this year awesome. it's a gold coin donation and we're going to meet once a month and choose a book so perhaps your book could be one that we choose and you come on and share about it yeah um, i'd love to do that because it's you know my my um you know my whole thing is about women rising unapologetically and tapping into our our witch our priestess our goddess our our woman hood our feminine essence however you like to term it so it would be beautiful if you wanted to of course i would love to thank you fabulous <laughs> and on that note we shall complete and i want to again thank jamie this was really it's got me excited again and wound up <laughs> so it's like my <laughs> mind's going to be churning and i've been listening to a podcast uh, an audio book on the goddesses of astrology because i work with astrology and i have them all related myself so again it's it's interesting to see different people's um how they relate all of the you know bring everything in and weave it together so i'm excited so thank you audience for being here for our listeners actually and we will see you again on the rich witch podcast and remember that you can ask questions um, in comments below and we will come back to you thanks again and i will sign off thanks jamie it was fabulous thank you it was really great to connect with you and your audience thank you bye for now
Thank you for joining us on the enchanting journey through the realms of magic, mystique, and self-discovery. I hope you enjoyed our time together on the Rich Witch Podcast, where we delve into the depths of witchcraft, astrology, and the unapologetic rise of women. Please subscribe, rate, and leave a review. And as we wrap up, I encourage you to carry the wisdom and magic we've shared into your own life. Embrace the power within you and revel in the beauty of your own unique journey. Stay tuned for more magic. And in the meantime, stay curious and know your magic is a gift to the world. Blessed be, beautiful ones, and remember, the magic is always within you. This is Julie Nelson, signing off.